And what may be your business with Yum Yum? I'll tell you. A year ago, I was a member of the City Pool Town Band. It was my duty to take the cap round for contributions. While discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. We loved each other at once. But she was betrothed to her guardian, Coco, a cheap tailor. And I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight, when I heard a month ago that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting, I hurried back at once in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner <laughs> under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs> Great Mikado, virtuous man, when he to rule our land began, resolved to try a plan whereby young men might best be steadied. So he decreed in words succinct that all who flirted leered or winked, unless can you be a link, should forthwith be beheaded, 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 should forthwith be beheaded. <laughs> I expect you'll all agree that he was right to so decree. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right as right can be. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right as right as right can be. And all is right as right can be. Right and right can be. Turn decree, you'll understand, cause great dismay throughout the land, for young and old and shy and bold were equally affected. The youth who winked a roving eye, or breathe a non-connubial sigh, was thereupon condemned to die. He usually objected, 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 he usually objected. <laughs> And you'll allow, as I expect, that he was right to so object. And I am right, and you are right, and everything is quite correct. And you are right, and we are right, and everything is quite, is quite correct. And everything is quite correct. All is quite correct. And so we straight let out on bail, a convict from the county jail, whose head was next on some pretext condemned to be mown off, and made him headsman, for we said, who's next to be decapitated, cannot cut off another's head until he's cut his own off, his own off, his own off, until he's cut his own off. <laughs> We are right, I think you'll say, to argue in this kind of way. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right to Lorelei. You are right, and we are right, and all is right to Lorelei. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right to Lorelei. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right. Right. 
Coco, the cheap tailor, Lord High Executioner of Titipu? Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. Our logical Mikado, seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence, has rolled the two officers into one, and every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you are a nobleman of the highest rank, to condescend to tell all this to me, a mere strolling minstrel. Don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of a pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You will understand this when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal a primordial atomic globule. Uh, consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. <coughs> I can't help it, I was born sneering. But I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually. When all the great officers of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salary is attached to them. Mm. You did. It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord of Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buckhounds, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Tidipu, and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one, and at a salary, a poobah paid for his services, I, a salaried minion, but I do it, it revolts me, but I do it. And it does you credit. But I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle-class people on a reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshment at any hands, however lowly. I also retail state secrets at a very low figure. For instance, any further information about Yum Yum would come under the head of a state secret. Another insult, and I think a light one. <laughs> And to spare, likewise go to Yum yum the pair you must not do It will not do, I'm sorry for you You very imperfect ablutioner This very day from two yum yum Will went away and home would come with a beat of drum and a rum tum to wed the Lord of High Execution. And the glass will crash and the trumpet bray and they'll cut an ash on their wedding day. She'll topple away as all of her with the Lord of High Execution. And the glass will crash and the trumpet bray. A hopeless case, as you may see, and in your place away I'd flee. But don't blame me, I'm sorry to be of your pleasure a diminution. They'll bow their back extremely soon. In point of fact, this afternoon. Ha ha ni moon with a bad moon at seven commences, so you shall have. And the blast will crash and the trumpet bray, and they'll cut a dash on their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all have her with the Lord High Execution. 
appears to be as you've recited. But here he comes, equipped as suits his station. He'll give you any further information. <laughs> Senses wafted by a favoring gale, as one sometimes is in France, to a height that few can scale. Safe by long and weary dances, surely never had a male under such like circumstances. So adventurous a tale, which may rank with most romances. Taken from a county jail by a set of curious chances. Surely never had a male so adventurous a tale. Depart, this reception. I can only trust that by strict attention to duty, I shall ensure a continuance of those favors which it will ever be my study to deserve. If I should ever be called upon to act professionally, I am happy to think that there will be no difficulty in finding plenty of people whose loss will be a distinct gain to society at large. Someday it may happen that a victim must be found. I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground and who never would be missed, who never would be missed. There's the pestilential nuisances who write for autographs, or people who have flabby hands and irritating laughs, or children who are up in dates and floy with a flat, or people who in shaking hands shake hands with you like that, and all third persons who on spoiling tater tates insist they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. Then 
There's the banjo serenader and the others of his race and the piano organist. I've got him on the list. And the people who eat peppermint and puff it in your face. They never would be missed. They never would be missed. Then the idiot who praises with enthusiastic tone. All centuries but this and every country but his own. And the lady from the provinces who dresses like a guy. And who doesn't think she dances but rather like to try. And that singular anomaly, the lady novelist. Well, I don't think she'd be missed. I'm sure she'd not be and that nice I prized Newson who just now is rather right, the judicial humorist, I got him on the list. All funny fellas, comic men and clowns of private life, they'd none of them be missed, they'd none of them be missed. And apologetic statesman of a compromising kind, such as what you call him, think me Bob, and likewise... Oh, well, never mind. And tut, 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 and what's his name? And also, well, you know who. The task of filling up the blanks I'd rather leave to you, but it really doesn't matter whom you put upon the list, for they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. And they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. Poobah. It seems that the festivities in connection with my approaching marriage must last a week. I should like to do it handsomely. And I want to consult you as to the amount I ought to spend upon them. Certainly, in which of my capacities, as the First Lord of the Treasury, Lord of Chamberlain, Attorney General, Chancellor of the Exchequer, a privy purse or private secretary? Suppose we say as private secretary. Speaking as your private secretary, I should say that... Uh, as the city will have to pay for it, don't stint yourself. Do it well. Exactly. As the city will have to pay for it, that is your advice. As private secretary. Of course, you will understand that as chancellor of the exchequer, I am bound to see that due economy is observed. Oh, yes. but you said just now, don't stint yourself. Do it well. As private secretary. And now you say that due economy must be observed. As a chancellor of the exchequer. I see. Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. Now then, as my solicitor, how do you advise me to deal with this difficulty? Well, as your solicitor, I shall have no hesitation in saying, chance it. Oh, thank you, I will. <laughs> if it were not that as Lord or Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law isn't violated. I see. Come over here where the Chief Justice can't hear us. Now then. As First Lord of the Treasury. Of course, as First Lord of the Treasury, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. <sighs> if it were not that as leader of the opposition, it would be my duty to resist its tooth and nail. Or as uh, a paymaster general, I could so cook the account that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. <laughs> but then, as Archbishop of Tidipu, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as First Commissioner of Police. That's extremely awkward. I don't say that all these distinguished people couldn't be squared. <laughs> but it is right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation Unless they are insulted with a very considerable bribe. <laughs> the matter shall have my careful consideration. As my bride and her sisters approach, and any little compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in the characteristic Japanese attitude, would be esteemed a favor. No money, no grovel. <laughs>
It is to be. You're not going to kiss me before all these people. Well, that was the idea. It seems odd, don't it? It is rather peculiar. Oh, I expect it's all right. It must have a beginning, you know. Well, of course, I know nothing about these things. But I've no objection if it's usual. Oh, it's quite usual, I think. And Lord Chamberlain? I have known it done. Thank goodness that's over. Well, it's never you. Oh, it's thank you, boy. We've been to school and we're not going back anymore. I beg your pardon. Will you present me? Oh, yes, I'm the best. Will you stay on? One at a time, you if you, you please. If you please. He's the gentleman who used to play so beautifully on the... on the... on the Marine Parade. Yes, I think that was the name of the instrument. Sir, I have the misfortune to love your ward, Yum Yum. Yum Yum? I know I deserve your anger. Anger? Not a bit, my boy. Why, I love her myself. Charming little girl, isn't she? Pretty eyes, nice hair, taking little thing altogether. Very glad to hear my opinion backed by a competent authority. Thank you very much. And goodbye. Take him away. Oh! I beg your pardon, but what is this? Customer come to try on. That is a tremendous swell. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's alive. Go away, little girls. I can't talk to little girls like you. <laughs> Go away, there's dears. Allow me to present you, Pooba. These are my three wards. The one in the middle is my bride elect. What do you want me to do to them? Mine. I will not kiss them. Oh, no, no, you shan't kiss them. A little bow, a mere nothing. You needn't mean it, you know. It goes against the grain. They are not young ladies, they are young persons. Oh, come, come, make an effort. There's a good nobleman. Well, I shan't mean it. But how to do, little girls, how to do. Oh, my protoplasmal ancestor. <laughs> That's very good. I see nothing to laugh at. It is very painful for me to have to say how to do little girls, how to do to young persons. I am not in the habit of saying how to do little girls, how to do to anybody under the rank of a stockbroker. <laughs> Don't laugh at him. He can't help it. <laughs> Have it, 
be spring, be hardness, be hardness. If we're inclined to dance and sing, ta la 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 la. Recollect, you cannot show too much respect towards highly titled few, but nobody does, and why should you? That you that I should have its sling is hard on us, is hard on us to our prerogative we cling so hard on us, so hard on us if we did line to dance and sing tra la 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 Yum, yum. At last we're alone. I have sought you night and day in the belief that a guardian was beheaded, and I find you're about to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. Modified rapture. But why do you not refuse him? What good would that do? He's my guardian, and he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, Girls do not arrive at years of discretion until they are 50. True. From 17 to 49 are considered years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of a Lord High execution. What if it should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There! I was certain of it directly I heard you play. What if it should prove that I am no other than the son of His Majesty, the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is Your Highness disguised? And what has Your Highness done? And will Your Highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, oh. an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled his court and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which you found me when I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please. I think Your Highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we're quite alone, and nobody can see us. Still, that uh, don't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Just take the law. I wish it would, but it won't. If it were not for that, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should now be sitting side by side, like that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off, like that. We should be gazing into each other's eyes, like that. Breathing sighs of unutterable love. Oh, oh. like that. With our arms round each other's waists, like that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. Oh, if it wasn't for the law. It is, of course. We couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for worlds. Being engaged to Coco, you know. Being engaged to Coco. <laughs> Were you not to Coco plighted, I would say in tender tone, love let us be united, let us be all alone. I would march all rank and station, 
My future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel. Really, it hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, matrimony. Oh, mat. Now then, what is it? Can't you see I'm soliloquizing? You have interrupted an apostrophe, sir. Oh. I am the bearer of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. A letter from the Mikado? What in the world can he have to say to me? Oh, take a seat. Ooh. Oh! Here it is at last. I thought it would come sooner or later. The Mikado is struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in Titipu for a year and decrees that unless someone is beheaded within one month, the post of Lord High Executioner shall be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that would involve us all in irretrievable wrath. Yes, there is no help for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. To me? What are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Why not? Because in the first place, self-decapitation is an extremely difficult, not to say dangerous, thing to attempt. Then the second, it's suicide. And suicide is a capital offence. That is so, no doubt. We might reserve that point. Oh, it could be argued a six months hence before the full court. Besides, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try. Oh. Even if you only succeeded in cutting it half off. <laughs> That would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the imperial will. No. Pardon me, but then I'm adamant. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake, and I can't consent to embark upon a professional operation unless I see my way to a successful result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you. <laughs> but it places us in a very awkward position. My good sir, the awkwardness of your position is grace itself, compared with that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. I am afraid that unless you can obtain a substitute, you will substitute. Oh, certainly. Nothing easier. Puma, I appoint you Lord High Substitute. I should be delighted. Such an appointment would realize my fondest dreams. 
But no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. I am so proud, if I allowed my family pride to be my guide, I'd volunteer to quit this here instead of you in a minute or two. But family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and mortified. My brain it teems with endless schemes of good and new. For titty poo, for titty poo. But if I flit the benefit that I diffuse, the town would lose. Now every man to aid his clan should plot and plan as best he can. I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who a curtain to can hardly feel the fatal steel, and so are slain, are slain without much pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you. Your courage grew to fit us adieu. I am so proud. My brain is teeming with endless tears. I am so proud. 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 I am so Yet recollect what disrespected I neglect to thus effect this aim direct, so I object. And so, although I wish to go and greatly fight, to brightly shine and take the line of a hero fine, to three and die, I must decline. And go and show both friend and foe how much you dare, I'm quite aware. It's your affair, yet I declare I take your share, but I don't much care. Sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock, in a passionate prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheapy, cheapy chopper on a big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock, in a passionate prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheapy, cheapy chopper on a big black block. A dull, dark dock. A lifelong long, a short, 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 a big black long. To sit in solemn silence in a picture like a picture and await the sensation of a chippy chippy chopper on a big black long. This is simply appalling. I'm now required to die within a month, and that by a man whom I have loaded with honors. Is this public gratitude? Is this... Go away, sir, how dare you? Am I never to be permitted to soliloquize? Go on, don't mind me. What, what are you going to do with that rope? I'm about to terminate an unendurable existence. Terminate your existence? Oh, nonsense, what for? Because you're going to marry the girl I adore. Oh, nonsense, sir, I won't permit it. I'm a humane man, and if you attempt anything of the kind, I shall order your instant arrest. Come, sir, desist at once, or I'll summon my guard. That's absurd. If you attempt to raise an alarm, I instantly perform the happy dispatch with this dagger. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. <gasps> why, why, this is horrible. Why, you cold-blooded scoundrel. Are you aware that in taking your life, you are committing a crime? And which is, which is... What's the matter? Is it absolutely certain that you're resolved to die? Absolutely. Will nothing whatever shake your determination? Nothing. Threats, entreaties, prayers, all useless? All my mind is made up. And if you really mean what you say, and if you're absolutely resolved to die, and if nothing whatever will shake your determination, don't spoil yourself by committing suicide, but be beheaded handsomely at the hands of the public executioner. But I don't see how that would benefit me. You don't? Observe. You'll have a month to live. You'll live like a fighting cock at my expense. When the day comes, there'll be a grand public ceremonial. You'll be the central figure. <laughs> no one will attempt to deprive you of that distinction. There'll be a procession, van, dead march, bells tolling, all the girls in tears, yum yum distracted. And then when it's all over, general rejoicings and a display of fireworks in the evening. <laughs> 
You won't see them, but they'll be there all the same. Do you think Yum Yum would really be distracted at my death? I'm convinced of it. Bless you, she's the most tender-hearted little creature alive. I should be sorry to cause her pain. And perhaps, after all, if I were to withdraw from Japan and travel in Europe for a couple of years, I might contrive to forget her. I don't think you could forget Yum Yum so easily. And after all, what is more miserable than a love blighted life? Oh, true. Life without Yum Yum. Why, it seems absurd. And yet there are a good many people in the world who have to endure it. Poor devils, yes. You are quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number. Noble fellow. I'll tell you how we manage it. Let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month you may behead me. Oh, no, no. I draw the line at Yum Yum. Very good. If you can draw the line, so can I. Oh, but stop. Listen for a moment. Be reasonable. How can I consent to your marrying Yum Yum when I'm going to marry her myself? But my good friend, she'll be a widow in a month, and you can marry her then. Oh, that's true, of course, I quite see that. But dear me, my position during the next month will be most unpleasant, most unpleasant. Not half so unpleasant as my position at the end of it. Oh, but dear me, well, I, I agree. After all, it's only putting off my wedding for a month. But you won't prejudice her against me, will you? You see, I've educated her to be my wife. She's been taught to regard me as a wise and good man. Now, I shouldn't like her views on that point disturbed. Trust me, she shall never learn the truth from me. to do we punctually appear. Congratulate me, gentlemen, I found a volunteer. The gentleman is the gentleman of the field, yeah. Tis Nanky Poo. Tis Nanky Poo. I think he'll do. Yes, yes, he'll do. He yields his life if I yum yum surrender. Now I adore that girl with passion tender and could not heal her with a ready will or her a lot if I did not adore myself with passion tender still. With passion tender still. I am She's yours. The threatened cloud has passed away. But though the night may come too soon, then let her from her joy.
man you got to die if Coco tells us true. Twere empty compliments to cry long life to Nanky Poo. But as one man you have to live as fellow citizen, this toast with three times three we'll give long life, long life to you, long life to you. Mom. Mom. There's lots of good fish in the sea. Mom. 
am indeed beautiful. Sometimes I sit and wonder, in my artless Japanese way, why it is that I'm so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. Can this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. The sun whose rays are all ablaze with ever-living glory does not deny his majesty he scorns to tell a story. We don't explain why flush for shame so the man I love best, and I believe I'm the very happiest girl in Japan. The happiest girl indeed. Well, she is indeed to be envied who has attained happiness in all but perfection. In all but perfection? Well, dear, it can't be denied that the fact that your husband is to be beheaded in a month is in its way a drawback. It does seem to take the top off it, you know. I don't know about that. It all depends. At all events, he will find it a drawback. Not necessarily, bless you. It all depends. I think it very indelicate of you to refer to such a subject on such a day. If my married happiness is to be... to be... Cut short? Well, cut short in a month. Can't you let me forget it? <laughs> yum yum in tears. And on her wedding morn. They've been reminding me that in a month you're to be beheaded. Yes, <laughs> we've been reminding her that you're to be beheaded. It's quite true, you know. You are to be 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 beheaded. Hmm. How some bridegrooms would be depressed by this sort of thing. A month? Well, what's a month? <laughs> These divisions of time are purely arbitrary. Who says 24 hours make a day? There's a popular impression to that effect. Then we'll efface it. 
We'll call each second a minute, each minute an hour, each hour a day, and each day a year. At that rate, we've about 30 years of married happiness before us. And at that rate, this interview has already lasted four hours and three quarters. Yes, how time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let's be downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's, let's be perfectly happy. By all means, let's, let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It's absurd to cry. Quite ridiculous. <laughs> Go on, don't mind me. I'm afraid we're distressing you. Never mind, I must get used to it. Only please do it by degrees. Begin by putting your arm around her waist. There, let me get used to that first. Would you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. No, I must learn to bear it. Now oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like that. Like that. I'm much obliged to you. Now, k k kiss her. Thank you very much. It's simple torture. Come, come, bear up. After all, it's only for a month. No, no. It's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What, what do you mean? mean? My child, my poor child. How shall I break it to her? My little bride that was to have been. Was to have been? Yes. You never can be mine. Oh, what? That's so I have just ascertained that by the Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. Buried alive? Buried alive. It's a most unpleasant death. <laughs> but who did you get that from? Oh, from Poobah. He's my solicitor. But he may be mistaken. So I thought. So I consulted the Attorney General, the Lord Chief Justice, the Master of the Rose, the Judge Jordan, the Lord Chancellor. They're all of the same opinion. Never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. But stop a bit. This law has never been put in force. No, not yet. You see, flirting is the only crime punishable with decapitation. And married men never flirt. Of course they don't. I quite forgot that. Well, I suppose I may take it that my dream of happiness is at an end. Darling? Yes? Oh. I don't want to appear selfish, 
And I love you with all my heart. I don't suppose I shall ever love anyone else half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my own, I had no idea that, that I should have to be buried alive in a month. Nor I. It's the very first I've heard of it. It makes a difference, don't it? It does make a difference, of course. You see, burial alive, it's such a stuffy death. I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Yes, and I see my own. If I insist on your carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. And if I release you, you marry Coco at once. Here's how they do If I marry you When your time has come to perish Then the maiden whom you cherish Must be slaughtered too Here's how they do Here's how they do She has a pretty mess In a month or less I must die without a wedding Let the bitter tears I'm shedding Witness my distress She has a pretty mess She has a pretty mess Here's a state of things to her life she clings. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Very ill it brings. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. With a passion that intense in worship and adore. But the laws of common sense we oughtn't to ignore. If what I say is true, tis death to marry you. Here's a pretty state of things. Here's a pretty how we do. Here's a pretty state of things. A pretty state of things. Here's a how we do. Here's a pretty how de do. My poor boy, I'm really very sorry for you. Thanks, old fellow, I'm sure you are. You see, I'm quite helpless. I quite see that. I can't conceive anything more distressing than to have one's marriage broken off at the last moment. But you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. But that's impossible. Why, sir? Today I die. What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon, I perform the happy dispatch. Oh, no, no, oh. don't do that. Why not? <gasps> oh. 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 Why, hang it all. You're under contract to die by the hands of the public executioner in a month's time. If you kill yourself, what's to become of me? Why? I shall have to be executed in your place. It would certainly seem so. Now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? The Mikado and his suite are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. The Mikado? He's coming to see whether his orders have been carried out. Now look here, you know, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain and you really mustn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. As a man of honor and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously at the hands of the public executioner. Very well, then. Behead me. Oh. What now? Certainly, at once. Oh. Chop it off, Coco, chop it off. My good sir, I don't go about prepared to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. Why, I, I never even killed a blue bottle. Still, as Lord High Executioner... My good sir, as Lord High Executioner, I've got to behead him in a month. I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I'm going to take lessons. I mean to begin with the guinea pig and work my way through the animal kingdom until I come to a second trombone. Why, you don't suppose as a humane man I'd have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought the duties were purely nominal? I can't kill you. I'm very sorry. I can't kill anything. I can't kill anybody. <laughs> Come, my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discharge at times. After all, what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I kill you when making an affidavit that you've been executed will do just as well? There are plenty of witnesses. The Lord Chief Justice, the Lord High Admiral, Commander-in-Chief, Secretary of State for the Home Department, First Lord of the Treasury, and Chief Commissioner of Police. But where are they? There they are. 
They'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all of us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted as usual. Will the insult be cash down or at a date? It will be a ready money transaction. Well, it will be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. <laughs> Family pride, how do you like that, me buck? But I tell you that life without yum-yum oh, will be... yum-yum-yum-yum, bother yum-yum. Here, Commissioner, go and fetch yum-yum. Now take yum-yum and marry yum-yum. Only go away and never come back again. Ah, oh, here she comes. Yum-yum, are you particularly busy? Not particularly. You five minutes to spare? Yes. Then go along with His Grace, the Archbishop of Titipu, and he'll marry you at once. <laughs> But if I'm to be buried alive... Don't ask any questions, but do as I tell you, and Nanki Poo will explain all. But one moment! <gasps> Not for worlds! Here comes the Mikado, no doubt to ascertain whether I've obeyed his decree. And if he finds you alive, I shall have the greatest difficulty in persuading him that I've beheaded you. Close thing, that, for here he comes. <laughs> Second, I'm certainly reckoned the true philanthropist. It is my very humane endeavor to make to some extent each evil liver the running river of harmless merriment. My object. 
object all to blame. I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make his prisoner pent, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. <laughs> Rosy, dull, society sinners who chatter and bleat and bore are sent to hear sermons from mystical Germans who preach from ten to four. The amateur tenor whose vocal villain is all desire to shirk shall during off hours exhibit his powers to Madame Tussauds wax work. The lady who dies a chemical yellow or stains her grey hair puce or pitches her figure is painted with vigor and a permanent Walnut juice of the idiot who in railway carriages scribbles on window panes. We only suffer to ride on a buffer in a parliamentary All to blame, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make it prisoner pit, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. She must take all the blame, he will achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit. Advertising quack who wearies with tales of countless cures. His teeth have been that it shall all be extracted by terrified amateurs. The musical singer attends a series of matches and feuds and offs. By Bach into Oval, Miss Swan and Beethoven and classical Monday pops. The billiard sharp whom anyone catches his doom's extremely hard. He's made to dwell in a dungeon a cell on a spot that's always barred. And there he plays extravagant matches in fitless finger stalls. On a cloth untrue with a twisted pew. And elliptical period balls. <laughs> My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime. And make its prisoner pent, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. To not be called the crime, we will achieve in time to let the punishment be. in being permitted to welcome your majesty. I guess the object of your majesty's visit, your wishes have been attended to. The execution has taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, have you? Yes, the coroner has just handed me his certificate. I am the coroner. And this is the certificate of his death. At Titty Pool, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, a Secretary of State for the uh, Home Department, a Lord Mayor, and uh, groom of the second floor front. They were all present, Your Majesty. I counted them myself. Very good house. I wish I'd been in time for the performance. A tough fellow he was too, Your Majesty. A man of gigantic strength. His struggles were terrific. 
It was really a remarkable scene. Describe it. The criminal cried as he dropped him down in a state of wild alarm. With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail, and on his knees fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and guggled, I drew my sneaker sneeze. My sneaker sneeze. Oh, never shall I forget the cry or the shriek that shriek at he. As I gnashed my teeth, when from its sheath I drew my sneaker sneeze. <laughs> And shook as he gave the sign for the stroke he didn't deserve. When all of a sudden his eye met mine, and it seemed to brace his nerve. For he nodded his head and kissed his hand, and he whistled an ADP. As the sabre drew, cut cleanly through his cervical vertebrae. When a man afraid a beautiful maid is a cheering sight to see, and it's oh, why glad that moment said was soothed by sight of me. have said that head was dead, for it's all a dead was he. It stood on its neck with a smile well bred, and bowed three times to me. It was none of your impudent offhand nods, but as humble as could be. For it clearly knew the deference due to a man of a pedigree. Of a pedigree. And it's all oh, I vow, this deathly vow was a touching sight to see. Though drunk as yet, it couldn't forget the deference due to me. and I should like to have seen it. But we came about a totally different matter. A year ago, my son, the heir to the throne of Japan, a bolted from our imperial court. Indeed. Had he any reason to be dissatisfied with his position? None, whatever. <laughs> On the contrary, I was going to marry him, yet he fled. <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised that he should have fled from one so lovely. That's not true. No. You hold that I'm not beautiful because my face is plain, but you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Learn then that it is not in the face alone that beauty is to be sought. My face is unattractive. It is. But I have a left shoulder blade that is a miracle of loveliness. People come miles to see it. My right elbow has a fascination that you can resist. Allow me. It is on view Tuesdays and Fridays on presentation of visiting cards. As for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. And yet he fled. And is now masquerading in this town, disguised as a second trombone. 
second trombone. Yes. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to uh, produce him? He goes by the name of... Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo. Oh. oh, it's quite easy. That is, it's rather difficult. In point of fact, he's gone abroad. Gone abroad? Oh! What's the matter? Oh, see here his name. Nanky Poo beheaded this morning. Oh, where shall I find another? Where shall I find another? Dear, 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 this is very tiresome. My poor fellow, in your anxiety to carry out my wishes, you have beheaded the heir to the throne of Japan. I beg to offer an unqualified apology. I desire to associate myself with that expression of regret. We really had the least notion. Oh, of course you hadn't. How could you? Oh, come, come, my good fellow. Don't distress yourself. It was no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, oh, he must take the consequences. It really distresses me to see you uh, take on uh, so. I've no doubt he thoroughly deserved all he got. We are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged, your majesty. Very much obliged, your majesty. Obliged, not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? Well, of course we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. <laughs> it wasn't written on his forehead, you know. It might have been on his pocket handkerchief. <laughs> but Japanese don't use pocket handkerchiefs. I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. <laughs> punishment? Oh. Oh, yes, something lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. Oh. Oh, something of that sort. I think boiling oil occurs in it, oh, but I'm not sure. Oh. I know it's something you mothers, but lingering oh. with either boiling oil or melted lead. Oh. Oh. Come, come, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry. Your Majesty will accept our assurance. We had no idea. I knew nothing about it. I wasn't there. If that's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the fool of an actor says, encompassing the death of the heir apparent. Yes. There's not a word about a mistake. No. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. Or not being there. No. Oh, there should be, of course. Yes. Uh, but there isn't. Oh. That's the slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. However, cheer up. It'll be all right. I'll have it altered. Next session. What's, What's the good of that? Now, let's see about your execution. Will after luncheon suit you? Can you wait till then? Oh, oh yes, yes, we, we can, can wait, wait till then. Then we'll make it after luncheon. I don't want any lunch. I'm really very sorry for you all. But it's an unjust world. And virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. See how the fate there gives a god. For A is happy, B is not. Yet B is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than A. Is B more worthy? I should say this worth a great deal more than A. Yet A is happy. 
detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bold and unconvincing narrative. Corroborative detail, indeed. Huh. Corroborative figures. You're just as bad as he is with your cock and bull stories about catching his eye and his whistling an air. But that's so like you. You must put in your all. But how about your big right arm? Yes, and your snicker snee. Oh, well, never mind that now. There's only one thing to be done. Nanky Poo hasn't started yet. He must come to life again at once. Oh, here he comes. Oh, Nanky Poo, I've good news for you. Your reprieve. Oh, but it's too late. I'm a dead man and I'm off for my honeymoon. Oh, nonsense. A terrible thing has just happened. It seems you're the son of the Mikado. Yes, but that happened some time ago. Is this a time for airy Percy Blarge? Your father is here. And with Katisha. My father? And with Katisha? Yes, he wants you particularly. So does she. Oh, but he's married now. But bless my heart, what's that got to do with it? Katisha claims me marriage, but I can't marry her because I'm married already. Consequently, she will insist on my execution. And if I'm executed, my wife will have to be buried alive. You see our difficulty. Yes, I don't know what's to be done. There's one chance for you. If you can persuade Katisha to marry you, she will have no... Oh, she will have no further claim on me. And in that case, I could come to life without any fear of being put to death. I marry Katisha? I really think it's the only cause. Oh, but my good girl, have you seen her? She's something appalling. Oh, that's only her face. She has a right elbow which people come miles to see. I am told that her left heel is much admired by connoisseurs. My good sir, I decline to pin my heart on any lady's left heel. It comes to this. While Katishar is single, I prefer to be a, a disembodied spirit. When Katishar is married, existence be as welcome as the flowers in spring. <laughs> The flowers that bloom in the spring Tra-la, we promise of merry sunshine But they merrily dance and we sing Tra-la, we welcome the hope that they bring Tra-la, of a summer of roses and wine Of a summer of roses and wine And that's what we mean when we say that a thing Is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring Tra-la, la 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 tra la 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 The flowers that bloom in the spring the flowers that bloom in the spring, tra la, have nothing to do with the case. I've got to take under my wing, tra la, a most unattractive old thing, tra la, with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. 
And that's what I mean when I say or I sing. Oh, follow the flowers that bloom in the spring. Ta la 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 la, ta la 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 la. Oh, follow the flowers of spring. away from a lovesick suppliant whose every fiber thrills at your tiniest touch. 
True it is that under a poor mask of disgust, I have endeavored to conceal a passion whose inner fires are broiled so within me. But the fire will not be smothered. It defies all attempts at extinction and breaking forth all the more eagerly so long restraint. Declares itself in words that will not be weighed, cannot be schooled, and should not be too severely criticized. Cat. Oh, Catisha, I dare not hope for your love, but I will not live without it. Darling. Ooh, you who stand in the reek with the blood of my soul, dare to rest words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged? I do. I accept my love, or I perish on the spot. Oh! Oh. Go to, who knows so well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart. You know not what you say. Listen. On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. And I said to him, Dicky bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit willow, tit willow? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie, I cried, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. Slept at his chest as he sat on that bough, singing willow, tit willow, tit willow, and a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He sobbed and he sighed, and a gurgle he gave. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave. And an echo arose from the suicide's grave. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name isn't willow, tit willow, tit willow. That was blighted of fiction that made him exclaim, Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. And if you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did. And you will know why, though I probably shall not exclaim as I die. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. Did he really die of love? He really did. All on account of a cruel little head. Yes, <laughs> poor little chap. It's an affecting tale and quite true. I knew the bird intimately. Did you? He must have been very fond of her. His devotion was something extraordinary. <laughs> poor little chap. And, and if I refuse you, will you go and do the same? At once. Oh, no, no, you mustn't. Anything but that. Oh, I'm a silly little goose. You are. And you won't hate me because I'm just a little teeny weeny wee bit bloodthirsty, will you? Thank you. Katisha, is there not beauty even in bloodthirstiness? My idea exactly. <laughs> There is beauty in the bend of the blast. There is grandeur in the growling of the gale. There is eloquence at pouring when the lion is a roaring and the tiger is a lashing of his tail. Yes, I like to see a tiger from the Congo or the Niger, and especially when lashing of his tail. Volcanoes have a splendor that is grim, and earthquakes only terrify the doves. But to him who's scientific, there is nothing as terrific in the falling of a flight of thunderbolts. Yes, in spite of all my meekness, if I have a little weakness, it's a passion for a flight of thunderbolts. 
I'm requesting on a subject interesting as a maiden, all the better when she's tough. Through up this wide dimension, it's the general opinion that she laughed a good deal longer when she's tough. Are you old enough to marry, do you think? Won't you wait until you're 80 in the shade? There's a fascination frantic in a ruin that's romantic. Do you think you are sufficiently decayed? Oh, the matter that you mentioned, I have given some attention, and I think I am sufficiently decayed. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry, it's evident, very arty, so one. Away we'll go and merrily, merry no tardy, can it day is done. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry, it's evident, very arty, so one. Away we'll go and merrily, merry no tardy, can it day is done. Sing Derry down Derry, we'll merrily, merry no tardy, can it day is done. It's like this. It's quite true that I stated that I had killed Nanki Poo. Yes, with most affecting particular. Merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude Will to an otherwise bold and in your narrative. It's like this. When your majesty says, let a thing be done, that thing is as good as done. Practically, it is done because your majesty's will is law. Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman. Well, the gentleman is told off to be killed. Consequently, that gentleman is as good as dead. Practically, he is dead. Well, if he is dead, why not say so? I see. And nothing could possibly be more satisfactory. Oh, he's gone and married yum yum. yum, yum. Your anger free fairy for all will be merry. I think you had better sit down <laughs> and join our expressions of glee. On this subject, I pray you be down. <laughs> your notions, though many, are not worth a penny. The word for your guidance is mum. <laughs> Give a very good bargain in me. Fred and Cloud has passed away. Oh, but though the night may come too soon, we give a little afternoon. And let the joy of 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 the
laughing song and merry dance, laughing song and merry dance, with love. 